Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Welcome to your Friday night. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. A couple of snowflakes to our west. Don't need to worry about those. But this moisture here is moving to the north towards southeast Michigan. Will it hit us or not? The answer and your weather forecast for the weekend in minutes. Okay, Andrew, two people hit while walking on the sidewalk in Macomb <clears throat> County. The driver took off, but he didn't get very far before police caught up with him. It's just senseless. I don't understand what happened, why. A family devastated by a double homicide does its best to cope with its loss. This Detroit killing left two men dead, and Detroit police say it was another family member who pulled the trigger. Yeah, and tonight, the rest of the family held a candlelight vigil. Local 4's Rod Maloney was there as the family hopes they can find it some peace. In the early morning hours of Thursday, the lights were blue and red in this neighborhood as DPD was processing a double homicide at this house. A day later, a grieving family has replaced those lights with candles. They're here on the stoop as they try and find some kind of solace through their soul. Oh Lord, we come with bowed heads and humble, heavy hearts. And teary eyes. A couple dozen family members came to remember 69-year-old Vietnam Army vet Anthony Foster on the left and his nephew, 41-year-old Devon Gillard on the right. You know, oh Lord, that our family has been broken. Angela Gibson fondly remembers her uncle Anthony. Loving, family oriented, funny. Just loved everybody, will give you anything. That's. Mm. <laughs> Anthony's brother Coy Jefferson equally broken up. He meant love, and he was a, a nice guy, so I understand, you know, love went on, so. The two men were visiting another family member when the gunfire broke out. The man responsible barricaded himself inside the house, and DPD had to go in and get him. Only you can heal heavy hearts, oh Lord. Only of Devon, Angela said. All the kids loved him. The main question was why? No one had ready answers. It's a hard pill to swallow. I feel like the family is being divided now. It's terrible. Yet somehow, in the winter chill and the candlelight glow, they found a moment of peace. Well, everybody out here, we all got to stick together. 44-year-old Sylvester Denard Gilmore is the family member who's been arrested in this case. He's charged with two counts of first-degree murder and felony firearms. The expectation is that he'll be arraigned tomorrow morning in this case. Reporting live in Detroit, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Okay, Rod, some breaking news in Roseville right now. Portions of Utica and Common Roads are shut down after a man and a woman are hit by a car while walking on the sidewalk. Police say the driver never stopped but was arrested almost immediately by Fraser Police. Both victims are 23 years of age. The woman is in critical condition while the man is in serious condition. Traffic in the area is expected to be closed there for several more hours. A chilly start to the weekend. Andrew uh, is tracking a little bit of mix of rain and snow, but hopefully not too much, right? That's right. That's the <laughs> operative thing, it looks yeah. like, Karen, because overnight tonight it remains mostly dry, but by morning we could have a little slipperiness out there, but not too much. We know we still have some shopping to do over the weekend, and overall Saturday looks good. Right now we have temperatures at or just below the freezing mark. We're one degree above freezing, though, over at Metro Airport for Detroit, 33 degrees currently, but in other areas, 29, 30 degrees, up to around 32. That is key. Every degree counts because we have this moisture down here to our south, all part of an area of low pressure that's actually going to move over to our east and be a huge east coast storm. But we are going to be right on the fringe of it. That means we keep the clouds in place. Notice this moisture here. This is what I'm concerned about during the overnight hours. Over the next few hours, if it's a late night for you, it remains mostly dry. But by 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, we could see some either for, uh, frozen drizzle, or we could see some fog develop, or we could see some chilly rain showers, or a mixture of all of that. But it will be so light, it may just call, cause a thin glaze of ice on area roads. So we're talking about slipperiness that's not too treacherous, not too widespread, but just enough to keep us on our toes. What about tomorrow afternoon? That and your Sunday forecast in minutes. All right, Andrew.
For just the fourth time in American history, a House panel has approved articles of impeachment against a sitting president. While the president is lashing out at Democrats and the process, at least one local Democrat is suggesting not all Republicans are voting their conscience. Jason Colthorpe in the newsroom tonight with the very latest. Jason. Yeah, not only does Representative Brenda Lawrence think the vast majority of Democrats are going to vote to impeach, she suggests that some Republicans secretly want to as well. Two articles of impeachment, Judiciary obstruction of Congress order. and abuse of power, pass out of the House Judiciary Committee. The article is agreed to. The resolution is amended, is ordered, reported favorably to the House. Impeachment is their drug, it is their obsession, it is their total focus. And now America waits for an historic vote by the full House of Representatives Wednesday. It was clearly an abuse of power. Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence is voting to impeach, but I asked her if she was worried about several Democrats in tight districts, like Congresswoman Haley Stevens and Alyssa Slotkin, who might break ranks. You think we'll get every Democratic vote? We won't get everyone, but we will get the mass of the Democratic Party will be voting in support of impeachment. And, you know, if it was a, if it was a private vote, we would have a lot of Republicans. Because the whisper that I get on the floor is that we know he did something wrong. Lawrence suggested that any Republicans who support impeachment are simply afraid to speak up because of the political payback from the president and his supporters. Because when he goes after you, and then his base is, is very committed, and they will go after uh, a Republican as well. Now we should know Lawrence is the only one talking about those whispers. And if the president is impeached in the House, it would then go to the Senate for his trial, which is controlled by Republicans. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell already saying he will coordinate with the White House counsel to make it a short trial with no witnesses that will almost certainly acquit the president. That trial will likely take place after the new year. Live in the newsroom tonight, Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. Jason. New tonight, Detroit police releasing a sketch of a man wanted for a deadly shooting on the city's east side. They believe the suspect is in his early 20s, 5 feet 11 inches tall and about 160 pounds. He's wanted for shooting and killing a 36-year-old man while he was inside a minivan. It happened in the area of Cedar Grove and Chalmers just a few days before Halloween. Police have already arrested one suspect in the shooting but believe there were two shooters. A man is killed in Pontiac while walking across train tracks. The 59-year-old Pontiac man was walking near Woodward and Wilson Avenue. Investigators say the railroad gates were down and working at the time of the accident. No one on the train was hurt. Her son disappeared from the Wonderland Mall in Livonia 25 years ago. And now, after all these years, the mother of Dwan Sims is again speaking with police after a local man is claiming he is the missing boy. Tonight, police tell us that man has been in touch with Dwan's mother, who is now living out of state. Police say she asked him some personal questions. Only that she would know or they would know. Personal, physical marks, etc. And, and he could not answer? He was not able to answer. Police say Dwan's mother is cooperating. As far as the DNA test that could get to the bottom of all of this, police say it could take several months before they get results. A Detroit man is accused of breaking into a 74-year-old woman's home and then stealing her car. The woman called police on Tuesday saying someone broke into her house, smashing her dining room window. Police were able to find her stolen car on Selden Street near the Lodge Freeway. 37-year-old Dewan Lawson was driving that stolen car. Lawson is now facing three felony charges. Governor Gretchen Whitmer signing a bill that will collect taxes on more online purchases. The bill will ensure Michigan's 6% sales tax is collected on more online sites such as Wayfair, Overstock, and Amazon. The new law could generate an additional $90 million in revenue a year, which will mostly go toward public schools. Now to an update on a story we brought you at 6 o'clock. The owner of a photo album dating back to the 1950s the owners have been located. Yeah, it's always fun to get reactions so quickly. It was within 30 minutes of airing our story on Local 4. Wixom police were able to locate the owner of that photo album. They plan to return the photo album to its owner sometime this weekend. Didn't take long. No. Glad to hear that. Still ahead, a disturbing discovery inside a popular hotel chain. What was found inside several rooms that now has police involved tonight. A stolen car, a 26-mile police chase, and a fake kidnapping. The charges this woman now faces after police finally caught up with her.
But first, it is a one-of-a-kind holiday tradition involving costumes, a parade, and even a horned demon. We'll take you there next on Uniquely Detroit. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh Over the fields we go, laughing all the way Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. 